Well, hello again. Welcome back to GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and today I'm going to give you a lesson on significant digits and calculations. Now, specifically, we're going to discuss how to determine how many significant digits an answer should have in a calculation. Well, really, it's going to depend on what kind of calculation are you doing, because we're going to see that the rules for multiplying and dividing are different from the rules for addition and subtraction. So when you multiply and divide, the rule says that the answer is going to be limited by the measurement with the least number of significant digits. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's say I have this calculation here. So I take 13.91 meters, I multiply it by 23.3 meters, and that equals 324.103 meters squared. Okay, well, the precision or the significant digits of my answer is limited to whatever the least precise or the least number of significant digits were that went in. So this one, we can see, has four sig figs. So this one is precise out to four significant digits. This one is precise out to three sig figs. So if I put in a number that's precise out to four, multiply it by one precise out to three, it wouldn't make any sense that my answer over here could suddenly be super precise and have six significant digits. No, I'm limited to whatever the least precise number that went in was. So the least precise was three, so this can only have three significant digits. So that's what I had to round it off to. So 324.103 would round off and I would get 324 meters squared. Good. Okay, let's do one more example with addition, I mean, with multiplication and division. So this one, 5.3020 divided by 360. So I went ahead and I punched that in my calculator and I got 0 0.014727, repeating. The units here are grams divided by milliliters, so literally just grams per milliliter. Okay, so multiplication and division, we've got to figure out what was the fewest number of significant digits. So this one, how many does it have? Well, the five, the three, the zero, the two definitely are. How about, how about this trailing zero? Well, trailing zeros are if there's a decimal, and there is. So all of these are. So this is five significant figures. How about 360? Well, definitely the three and the six. Again, we just said that trailing zeros are if there's a decimal, and there's no decimal here. So that one's not significant. So only the three and the six are. So this would be two significant digits or figures. Okay, so my answer can only be as precise as my least precise measurement that went into it. So obviously the least precise is two over here. So this can only go out to two. Okay, so which two? Well, leading zeros, we learned in our lesson before, on significant digits, are never significant. So the one and the four are the first two that are significant. So we just round them. Seven tells me to round up and add one to that four. So that'll become 0 0.015, and again, grams per milliliter. Okay, so that's how we do it when we multiply and divide. Um, the fewest sig figs of a measurement determines how many sig figs the answer can have. Now, when we're adding and subtracting, it's a little different. Now, it's the number of places in the answer. That determines um, how you should round off the places in the end. So the number of places in the answer should be rounded to the same number of places as the least precise measurement. And I'm sure that sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook right now. But when I say places, I mean things like uh, the ones place or the tenths place after a decimal, the hundredths place, those kind of places. So, again, here's an example. 4.1 plus 3.75 gives 7.85. Okay, so what's the least precise measurement out of these two in terms of places? Well, 4.1 is precise out to this place. This is the tenths place. 3.75, okay, that's precise out to this place, which is the hundredths 
place. Okay, so obviously, tenths place is not as precise as hundredths place. So the least precise measurement was the one out to the tenths. So my answer can only be out to the tenths. Or sometimes one way to do this is just to draw a line after that least precise place. So I'm going to draw it right after that tenths place. So 7.85, that would round off, and that would become 7.9 milliliters. Okay, let's do one more example with addition and subtraction. Now this one says 4,970 subtract 342.1. Now as you notice on this one, it was pretty handy to have these lined up when they're various places. So I had the ones lined up, the tenths lined up, the hundredths lined up. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to take 4,970 and I'm going to line up under that. 342.1 and they all have units of liters so I punch that on my calculator and I get 4627.9 liters okay so we got to look here we got to say we got to see again um, what's the fewest places that have significant digits so this one has significant digits in the thousands the hundreds and the tenths Remember, this is a trailing zero without a decimal, so this is not a significant digit. So in this case, the tens, that's the last place that has a significant digit in it, right? That one's not significant. How about in this number? Well, the hundreds, the tens, the ones, and the tenths. So the tenths place has a significant digit in it. Okay, so what's the least precise? Well, this one only goes out to tens. So I would round it off right after the tens. So four, six, seven tells me to round up, make that a three. But again, as we saw earlier in our lesson on rounding, I can't turn 4,000 into 400. I have to keep something in this ones place. I'm going to put on a placeholder zero. So that would be down to the tens place, 4,630. Okay, let's do a few more examples, but first I want to remind you of something called the order of operations. So PEMDAS is the abbreviation for this. So basically what this means is if you're doing multiple operations, you're doing multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting all at once, we well have to do it in a certain order. So you work from left to right, and you start with PEMDAS is the order. First P, parentheses, then exponents, then multiplying and dividing, then the last thing you would do is add and subtract. Okay, so let's do a few last examples. 14.82 times 0 0.0291. So I put that in my calculator and I get 0 0.431262. My units, centimeters times centimeters, are centimeters squared. Okay, so when we multiply, the rules say you use the fewest sig figs. So this one has four significant figures. This one, again, leading zeros are never significant, so 291. This would have three significant digits. So our answer can only have as many significant digits as our fewest. So this one is only precise out to three, so this can only be precise out to three. Okay, so I would take that and I would round that off, and that would become point four, three, one centimeters squared. Great. Okay, how about 14.82? We're gonna add to that 0 0.0291 inches. Okay, well again, as we saw before, it's handy when you're adding and subtracting to go ahead and line them up by their places. I'm gonna take 14.82 inches. I'm gonna add 0 0.02 nine one inches and I do that on my calculator and I get one four point eight four nine one okay so let's look here again at, at, at the significant digits and see what's the last place that has a significant digit in it so the one the four the eight and the two are all significant so this one goes out to the hundredths place all right Okay, how about 0 
Well, this one goes all the way out to this place, and that's the ten thousandths place. The ten thousandths place, which I won't write down. So, so what's the least precise? Well, ten thousandths is much more precise than hundredths, so I'm limited to the hundredths. So I would round that off, and that would become 14.8, and the 9 tells me to round that 4 up and make it a 5. So 14.85 inches. Okay, let's look at this one. Now in this case, I'm doing multiple operations. I'm adding and multiplying. So as we saw in that last slide, the order is you multiply and divide first, right, and then you add and subtract. So I'm actually going to do this part first. So 73.18 times 9.406. So just that part, if I do that on my calculator, I get 688.33108. So we're multiplying. So multiplying says use the fewest sig figs. So this number has four sig figs, 9.406 has four sig figs. So my answer can only have four sig figs. Now, you might, as you might recall though, in our lesson we had on rounding, if you're doing multiple operations, which we are here, we're multiplying and adding, you don't want to round off until you get done with the very last step. So instead what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to mark the fourth significant digit just to remind myself later that it should really be out to four sig figs. So now I'm going to take 688.33108, but I've marked that fourth one as a reminder that it should really only go out to the, uh, to the fourth significant figure here, or the tenths place. Now I'm going to add my 2.51. Okay. Okay, so 688.33108, and again, you don't have to keep all of these if you don't want, but you do want to keep at least one extra until you get to the end. So I would get 690.84108. Okay, well now we are adding. So this one, the 6, the 8, the 8, and the 3 are significant. So the last significant place, though, is the tenths place. This one goes out to 2.51. This goes out to the hundredths place. So our answer can only be whatever the, whatever the least precise one is, which is the tenths. So I would round that off. 690. The 4 tells me round down. 0.8. Well, there you go. Hope you found that lesson helpful. Uh, for more practice problems dealing with significant digits and calculations, please come and visit me at getchemistryhelp.com, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.